Punnett Square. What is it? When can we use it? And how can we use it? The Punnett Square can predict the genetic probability of a particular phenotype arising of a couple's offspring. What it does is that it tells you what alleles are likely to be expressed in the offspring given the genotype of the parents. Wait, you forgot what is genotype and what is phenotype, huh? The genotype is the genetic constitution of an individual organism. The phenotype is the set of observable characteristics of an individual from the interaction of its genotype. Here's a living example for you. Kiwi's color is green, which means his phenotype is green, which is the physical expression of his genes that you can actually see. But his genotype, however, which is his set of genes in its DNA, is both blue and green. Okay then, wait. Why is he green? Why isn't he blue? Well, because the green gene is dominant over the blue gene. Oh, you don't know what dominant is. The dominant gene is when a one copy of a gene is enough to express itself in the phenotype. And it is opposed to a recessive trait, which is expressed only when two copies of the gene are present. Like sky. Sky is blue. That is his phenotype. What's his genotype? Well, both of his genes are blue, because blue, as we have said before, is recessive to green. And that's why, in order for a phenotype to express the blue gene, we need both of his DNA genes to be blue. Now there are co-dominant genes, which none of them has dominance over the other. In that case, depending on what trait it is, we can have more than two forms. We will discuss that when we get to the dominant pied mutation, spangle mutation, and many more mutations that do have these co-dominant genes phenomenon. Okay, when can we use the Punnett square? Well, you can actually use it to any organism that reproduce sexually. There are two types of reproduction forms. Sexual, like us, humans, animals, birds, fish, and even plants. We need two humans to make a baby. And there is the other form, which is asexual, like bacteria. They just split without any sexual interaction. They don't need a partner in order to reproduce. Let's see now how can we use the Punnett square to determine the offspring outcome probabilities. Let's start with something simple that we all know. The probability of an offspring to have a female is 50% and for a male 50%, right? Let's prove that using the Punnett square. Let's take budgies as our example so you don't get confused. You might know that in humans or mammals in general, XY is a male and XX is a female. However, in birds, it's the opposite, XY is a female and XX is a male. Let's see the probability of having a female using the Punnett square. Here we have a female, we take her genes and split them, because in any sexual interaction, each parent gives one of its genes to its offspring. And here is a male, and of course we split his genes. And now we match each gene with the other parent's gene. And we get a Punnett square looking like that. Now we know XY is a female. Let's count how many squares have a female outcome in them. Which basically means we are counting how many squares have XY in them. Two squares. And since we have four squares, that means each square counts as 25%. So, 25% plus 25% equals 50%, which is exactly as we expected. 
And if we want to see the probability of a male budgie, we count how many squares have XX in them. And also we have two squares, which means males have a probability of 50% as well. Now let's see the probability for birdie and kiwi to have a blue based budgie. I know both of their genotypes are blue green. The green gene is BL with capital B and the blue gene is BL with small b. By the way, I have a full documentary about colors. If you want to learn more, check it out so you understand better. Now let's split their genes and see the outcome. Here, we have one square BLBL which is double green gene. That means not only 25% of the offspring are green birds, but none of them can have blue budgies in their offspring. I will show you how in a minute. Then we have 50% of the offspring green, but these 50% do carry the blue gene. And then we have 25% of the offspring are blue, because both of their genes are BLBL. Now when we look at the genotype, as you can see, we get a better picture of our budgies. But if we look at the phenotype, we don't understand much. All we know that these two budgies give 75% green budgies and 25% blue budgies. But with the Punnett square you can easily see that 25% can't have blue offspring and 50% do have the ability to bring you blue based budgies in their offspring. Of course depends on the other parent. Now why these 25% can't have blue offspring? Well, here are all three tables. If they breed with another budgie with the same genotype, which have both dominant BL, the green gene, we get 100% of the offspring is green and cannot have blue budgies like their parents. If we look at the second table where the other parent is carrying the blue gene, we can see that 100% of their offspring is green and 50% of them carrying the blue gene, but none of them is actually blue. And finally, if we breed with blue budgie, which means both of his genes are blue, because we already know it's recessive gene and in order to be a blue budgie, they need both of their genes to be blue. And we get 100% green offspring, but all of them, 100% of them carrying the blue gene. I hope this cleared the idea of what is Punnett square. When can we use it and how we can use it. Of course, in order to use it, you need to know both parents genotype in the specific gene you are talking about in order to calculate the probabilities. But now after understanding the Punnett square, its uses and how to use it, you can go to the budgies mutations playlist and you can understand what we are talking about in there. And you can start calculating yourself what are the probabilities for your own budgies. For more about budgies, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are watching this video from YouTube and hit the bell icon to get notified when the next video is up. Or like the Facebook page if you are watching this video from Facebook.